All right. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming here. Uh, I'm going to uh, present about Mario's adventure. I'm not going to play video games in front of you. Um, uh, it all makes sense. The title makes sense during uh, the presentation. So yes, as uh, my name is Shmuel Bujna, I work on the uh, upstream uh, Tekton. So I work directly on the, on the projects. I work mostly on the CLI. So I've been developing the CLI, and, uh, and we've been uh, like like working on uh, features, making it like everything that's uh, happening in uh, pipelines, like on the main project. We've been trying like to make those uh, those features available on the on the on the CLI and expose it. Uh, so I'm probably going to speak upstream, midstream, downstream, which is probably confusing for a lot of people. But what I mean when I say upstream, I mean the Tekton uh, project, like main project. Midstream is what we do as, a, as an engineer in Red Hat, is that uh, we take that product and we validate it on OpenShift, making sure it works on OpenShift. And uh, so maybe I'm going to mention upstream, midstream, and sometime, and uh, that's, that's the meaning. So what's the agenda? Uh, I'm going to tell you about Tekton. Another was another uh, presentation just before about Tekton, but uh, and means like I'm not going to go into too deep as what uh, the other presentation has done, but I'm still going to give you an overview at least for the web viewer, and uh, to be uh, able to uh, know like what is Tekton and uh, how, how we did it as well. So now it's like the main, the main, uh, the main, uh, the main goal of that conference is uh, to expose you, is to tell you it's like how we are doing a. Uh, our own plumbing, which is uh, CI, is an, uh, all the stuff that's running the, the, the project. And, uh, and what's the problem that we have seen uh, coming out of it? Is that uh, what's the process and uh, where it's coming? And, uh, and really, uh, what's going, what's going to, uh, what, what are we working on and uh, what's going to uh, come in? in our plumbing, in our CI, which is uh, like using ourselves, like Tekton, and uh, so what's the feature that the end user as well is going to use. So let me start like with the introduction to Tekton and uh, what is uh, Tekton. So first, that's uh, the main motto of the project is, uh, is to uh, provide a set of shared and standard components for building a Kubernetes style CI CD. So it's clan native, or it's Kubernetes native, so we, uh, so we directly plugs into uh, Kubernetes, and we directly plug into it uh, via the CRD system, which is the resource definition, which is an extension mechanism inside uh, Kubernetes, like to expose objects uh, inside a Kubernetes object for some other thing that's not inside, uh, inside uh, Kubernetes. And we are part of the CD foundation, uh, which is the cloud delivery uh, foundation, which is uh, with different companies from Google, Red Hat, CloudBees, IBM, Pivotal, and many, many more. All right, so Tekton in NHL. So what does Tekton? Uh, it's Kubernetes style, so pipeline, which means it's YAML. It's a bunch of YAML. Uh, you declare the YAML. It's like a declarative pipeline. And, uh, and those, those are, get picked up by Kubernetes custom resources. Cust uh, like you can, Kubernetes and Kubernetes custom resources is what you define your certain type of objects, and you say that uh, I want to define like a pipeline definition or task definitions, and, uh, and those get picked up by an operator, which is like the web controller, and uh, that controller would, uh, would just uh, like doing reaction on events. That's how you extend Kubernetes in general. Uh, you, uh, so the, Tekton, when it works, is like it runs the pipelines in containers. So everything, every steps that you do inside, uh, inside Tekton, you can write uh, like a huge shell script, but you can separate it like to multiple containers. What's, what's the advantage compared to the big shell script is that you can reuse all the facilities of different containers for different type of tasks and different uh, type of things and have a small task that is dedicated and that can be shared differently to the others. So you have like different containers. So those are, are stuff that's coming out of uh, Kubernetes, which is like the Kubernetes style to do that kind of CI. So you, uh, to, to build images, like uh, Tekton doesn't have an ambition like to provide like all the tools and uh, everything and to be like a huge mastodon. And uh, it, uh, it leverage on other like, uh, on other uh, building tools. Like a source to image, 
builder can echo J, JJB, uh, JIB, J, uh, which is like for Java uh, application. And uh, that's like usually you, uh, what, what, what's going to happen is that you're going to leverage on those tools to be able like to uh, build uh, your, uh, your container. So we don't provide, so when you say Tekton is building my container, we don't build the containers. We just launch the tools uh, that we leverage and uh, there is different way to do that kind of things as well. And uh, we, are, we, are, we are running on Kubernetes, we are Kubernetes native, but we are deploying, we can deploy anywhere. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be uh, deploying to, to Kubernetes, uh, even if it's easier to deploy on Kubernetes because you are running near your CI. But uh, if you want to deploy to uh, OpenStack or to Amazon or to whatever, then uh, you'll be fine with it. And uh, we provide uh, like some powerful command line tools, which I hope uh, uh, is powerful, and that uh, make it easy to uh, like list your pipeline, create it, and uh, choose it, and kind of thing. And it's all very interactive and very nice. And uh, the next release is going to have emoji support, so very good. Uh, uh, so the concept of pipeline. So I, I told you like uh, what's the, the general overview, but uh, when you look at um, at Tekton, it's like we have like five main building block. Uh, the first one, which is like the one that's the bottom of it, it's a step. Step is just like a little uh, little step that's going to uh, it's going to uh, part of your pipeline that's going to say. Uh, I'm going to set up my uh, Git project, or I'm going to uh, start to do my Go testing or make builds. It's one of the steps. After, if you look at high level, so I'm going from the bottom to the top, if you go to uh, steps, inside, you're going to have like a task. A task, like, is, is what, is, 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 like I say, is like it's going to, uh, like all the CI CD tools that you have seen before, and that task is going to uh, give you an overview, it's like, uh, like it's going to list up all the steps and how you're going to connect it to the, your Kubernetes cluster. And a pipeline, pipeline is a set of tasks. So if you have like a pipeline of set of tasks, so your full pipeline that's going to do a lot of tasks, which is going to have a lot of steps, is, uh, that's the higher level definition on the top. I have another slide after that's going to give you a, a better overview. And you have like pipeline resources. Pipeline resources is just plug inside pipeline and that's the input and output of the task. So you can have like a, an input can be like a git repo uh, or a pull request can be an input as well. And the output could be, for example, like a Docker registry or a container registry or whatever. And uh, that would, uh, would be the output that you're going to do. So you can plug, you can define your resources and how you're going to do input and output. Some tasks can have input and output together. So, uh, for example, you can have, uh, you can have uh, like the pull request resource. So that's when you say that as an input, I want to have like a pull request from uh, somewhere. So it's going to check out that uh, pull request and uh, it, it, it lets you like to change on, the, on, the, on your task. You can add a comment uh, by uh, specifying like a, a file inside the file system and you say that that task, that, uh, sorry, that, pull, uh, that pipeline resource it's going to do the output, so it's going to post back that comment to, the, to, the, to GitHub or to whatever uh, uh, VCS you're using. So we have a multiple driver. So that's, that's my main point is that you have input and output. And uh, after that, you have like the runners. So the runner is a pipeline run and task run, so you have your pipeline definition, and you have like a bunch of runners with different arguments if you wanted. So, so you can have like a pipeline uh, like build my code, like which is a go test or a task that's going to do go testing. And, uh, and uh, as parameters, you're going to have like a, a git repo, whatever git repo, but part of the runner, you're going to have like a link to, the, your, uh, to your repo. So here's a little bit more makes sense. So what I was saying before is that you have uh, on the top now, we're coming, we have the pipeline, which is like the big uh, thing that's included. Part of pipeline, you can have multiple tasks. Those tasks uh, are inside the pipeline are ordered. We have an order, which call a DAG inside uh, the thing, that's going to order the task uh, and how they're going to run. So inside your pipeline, you can say like, I want to run after this and run after this and after this task. So you're going to order the thing. The way it's, it works, like it's not complicated at all, it's very uh, straightforward in a very key way, is that uh, we create like a file on the file system and, uh, and uh, the task, 
there's, an, uh, like there's a demon, kind of demon, called an entry point, that's going to wait for that file to be deleted or to be available, and, and it's going to run it. So that's how like, the ordering is working, is like with some kind of file locking. So it's very simple uh, in a way, but it's very efficient because you don't need uh, like any persistent storage or any extra daemons to run and everything. It just, uh, everyone is waiting for each other, like uh, using, a, using, a, um, using, a, um, using a file on the file system. It's using like a empty deer kind of uh, volumes to do that kind of things. So you get like ordering in there, and uh, you, have, uh, you have everything that goes like, uh, that goes there, you can, and usually you take some runner, task run, or pipeline run, like it depends. And you can run uh, with different pipeline resources to run your pipeline again and again. And uh, you, can, uh, you can change, you can just compose, uh, uh, to composite like all your uh, different, uh, different uh, tasks and different uh, resources. So, so what, what do we do and what do we provide currently because there is stuff that's happening and, uh, and the new stuff that's going to happen. But currently, it's like pipeline. So that's what we call the core Tecton CD. That's what provides like the whole uh, shenanigan of uh, building and uh, and uh, and listening for the for what the, whatever the, the user like configuration is and whatever. You have uh, another project called Catalog. So Catalog is like a shareable task definition. So you get like a project with a lot of different tasks, like for building on Builder, for building with on Jib, or for for deploying on a ter with Terraform or a lot of things uh, like that with different uh, one. And uh, so people can pick up and uh, those tasks and integrate it in their project. So there is no automatic, uh, automatic way to specify like a, a remote task currently or like a catalog of tasks. Uh, but it's something that we've been working, uh, we've, been, we've been working in, we've been designing and uh, there's something that we want to, uh, to have. So the CLI, which is pretty straightforward, is the thing that uh, are actually uh, personally involved. It's uh, it's what you'd use like to interact usually with uh, with the um, with uh, with Tecton, and uh, in a CLI way. But uh, obviously, I mean, it's one way to implement it. There is other tools, like G Jenkins X is another tool that we have with like it's an higher level uh, uh, that does a lot more as well that interact with uh, Tecton. And uh, it's, uh, it's as well as other tools. So it's, but that's the official way currently on Tecton. And um, the, the most, the another interesting project is Triggers. So Triggers is, is a project that just came out, like 0 0.2 just came out uh, yesterday. So it's just pretty brand new. But the way it does is like it's going to listen to uh, HTTP uh, request. And out of the HTTP request, you're going to get uh, so a webhook, for example, from GitHub, GitLab, or whatever. And it's going to uh, have some definitions, like how you want to handle that, uh, that, uh, that request, and how you're going to, uh, how you're going to uh, what you're going to uh, provide a, as a pipeline run. So whenever like, uh, there is a pull request on that repo with, uh, with that command or whatever, then you can have, uh, you can have like, a new pipeline run uh, that's going to run. So that's what the binding between the two. Uh, we, uh, triggers uh, tri uh, tri triggers is, is very new, but it's a very interesting project, and there is a lot of uh, work going on. It's like, how are you going to be? It's not just like a GitHub webhook listener, and uh, to be much more, uh, much more than that. And the, the language inside Trigger I find like, really interesting is that uh, the way you're doing filtering is like you have a proper small little language called CEL that's, uh, you can, where you can do like, a bunch of conditions and everything is inside the, Inside your definition, how you uh, how you want to handle like the the web books and the and the web uh, request. So the operator is uh, is another thing that uh, our team in uh, Red Hat has been working on is that uh, it's an operator like to easily install uh, Tecton and uh, and to upgrade. I'm not going to talk about operator because I'm sure you've been hearing about it for a lot for a lot uh, over here. And uh, we have a web UI dashboard which is a really nice uh, web UI. Which has uh, been worked, uh, it's been worked heavily currently, and uh, which going to give you like a nice uh, overview and to create your pipeline and uh, to run your pipeline and everything. But uh, there is a lot of people who did develop uh, like different UIs, like OpenShift as well, OpenShift pipelines. Like we have, uh, we have our own dashboards, uh, part of the OpenShift console. But uh, there is other people that's been developing. But that's the official way, and uh, it's a very, it's very easy to deploy as well, and uh, you just have like. To send a Kubernetes create and you get everything uh, set up. 
So what's Mario's plumbing? Uh, so that's the title of my uh, thing. So plumbing, what's plumbing? Uh, so plumbing is like, uh, as you see the definition, this, which there's a word I can't even pronounce in that thing, which I don't understand, but uh, it's, uh, plumbing is what you have like in a house, and uh, what you have like that makes like all your plumbing and all tight stuff together. And for us here, what it means is like, it's all the, those uh, shell scripting and uh, all those uh, really setups and uh, all that stuff, we have one repo, we, we uh, everything, all those scripts are here, are here there, and that's what uh, makes uh, all the projects going on and uh, validating uh, the project and making the release or testing the CI. Uh, we have uh, all the configuration as well there, so that's what we call plumbing. Uh, we have, uh, so Kubernetes and Knative use uh, the word test infra, but I think uh, plumbing is a bit more, uh, it's a bit more fun, and we can have Mario on the, on the slide, so <laughs> that's nice. So you, the initial problem. So one one thing that uh, I didn't mention is that um, Tecton came out of Knative. So Knative is the serverless function, list or whatever it's called, or Lambda, whatever. That's a project on uh, on Kubernetes, and we were part of it at the beginning. It was it used to be called Tecton used to be called Knative Build, or it became after Knative Pipeline. It was a bit messy, but it came out of Knative. And uh, we became uh, we became our own project and uh, with uh, own uh, like part of another foundation, CDF foundation, and everything. So uh, we uh, we graduate. We we are we are not we are not in Knative anymore. We we can interact and uh, we we can have uh, integration between the two. But uh, it's nothing tied to Knative. But the problem, but not the problem, is like since uh, we came to Knative, we have a lot of those script of releases and everything. Everything was tied uh, to Knative. So the main challenge that we we've been facing is like is to get away from uh, Knative and uh, start to do um, and start to do uh, and start to do uh, like gradiator on and uh, and using our own things like with own uh, with own knowledge. Um, we have uh, we we like like one of the things that uh, we've been using a lot is uh, Pra. Pra is uh, the project from uh, coming out from Kubernetes. I don't think I don't know what they were using before because it had been three years ago. But uh, it's the main project that's been using by uh, Kubernetes and uh, and uh, and OpenShift, uh, and uh, it's the CI system that uh, that's coming. So we are very tight and we are still very tight to it. And one of our goal. Uh, and what I've described in this, in this presentation is like how we can untie ourselves from uh, from Pra, and really doing Tecton on Tecton, and being able uh, to uh, to dog food ourselves because a lot of the stuff that we are doing, that's the stuff that people has been asking us. So we are trying to uh, to get uh, there. So that's uh, the initial problem. So Pra, yeah, I was explaining. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's like it, like Pra is a, is a very uh, very interesting, uh, very interesting project. It's like he has almost uh, everything now because Kubernetes is like it's such a huge project. So they handle like a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, use cases, and it's it's a bit the same. It's like it's a native Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes um, CI/CD, uh, which uh, which has its own, uh, which have its its own uh, jobs. Like it's called Pro Jobs. And uh, it's it's written, but it's really written like for optimizing for the Kubernetes uh, st project need uh, and OpenShift as well. So we do we do currently using a, um, up to, uh, we use a Pra in some way, and uh, we are using as well on a midstream like what I was talking about. Like we're using a, as well uh, the Pra, but uh, our goals like like the work uh, upstream or midstream, or like that's the work we've been doing, is to move away from that and to do Tecton and Tecton and to really uh, use ourselves uh, for doing LCIs. So uh, let me describe a little bit more of Pra and all the components. I think there is another talk going, uh, going through uh, soon about uh, Pra, or maybe tomorrow. But there was earlier, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was in here. It's good to like. Uh, well, so I'm, for the for the person like me who wasn't here, like I'm going to explain <laughs> uh, what's Pro. So Pro is like have a different components uh, inside it. So you get like a web hook, which is like so all those terminology is uh, is uh, is from uh, boating stuff, Kubernetes and all that stuff. So hook you get, which is uh, the thing that's going to handle the, all the GitHub uh, web hooks, like the same stuff that we have like uh, as triggers that I was explaining before. You had uh, the plank, which is going to uh, going to uh, go and uh, try to uh, figure out like uh, the job execution and life cycles, like which jobs are going to run, which jobs are, going, are not going to run in which pods. 
and uh, really control the resources, uh, the hardware resources. You have uh, the DEX, so the DEX is really the dashboard, and you get like a full view of the recent jobs and uh, the plugin and the information, and, uh, and, and you can see as a peer author, you can see uh, all the, um, the history of your, of your PRs and when it started to fail or when it didn't. Uh, I, I have another slide which uh, shows you. And uh, you have Tide. Tide is the, is the one that's going to, uh, so you configure Tide on Pra, and you're going to say for that PR, you need this kind of amount of uh, core reviewer, or like one or two, depend on the project, or three. And uh, you need like this kind of uh, plus one to be able to uh, decide if that, that, um, that PR is going to be merged. Uh, you got like the overall low job, uh, which going to, uh, like it's basically going to do periodic jobs when necessary. And uh, you get the sinker, which is like clean up uh, the old job and spot, which is actually really important. So, like, if you don't have something that cleans up uh, your uh, your cloud, I mean, uh, you really run out of problem very easily because uh, that's something that uh, I never thought all the time. But uh, it's always like you just end up like with a huge uh, namespace with a lot of pipeline, a lot of things, and we have a lot of pipeline runs running through. So having something that's clean up, which is something that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really nice. But we don't have anything that's uh, built in inside, uh, inside TechTown now. That's uh, very specific to Pro. So here's the Pro dashboard. So you can see on the Pro dashboards like what's, uh, what's been using. Uh, you have uh, like the, the deck and the, the status page, and uh, you get the merge requirement and uh, all those things like that. Uh, we get uh, logs as well, and the logs are you get like some kind of highlighting of the. So it's basically like trying to get like uh, regex of fatal and errors, and after it's going to say the context of the ten lines that's between to explain the failure. But usually you take the failure out of the exit code on a pro with whatever exit code that's coming. If it's one over over zero, then it's like a failed job. So that was pro. So now it's like we are in the process like to use our own pipes, like I was saying before. So the, the first steps, like to get that, uh, to get to, to other independence. So we had to create our own Tekton CD plugin, and we started like, to uh, document like all our needs of plugin. That's what, that's what we started to do. And uh, to start like to own all CI scripts. So instead of uh, before we were like, we were like getting like all the plumbing testing fra from Knative, all the scripting and stuff. So now it's like we have our own. And uh, a lot of it is based on the same semantics of uh, what, uh, what Kinetic does, because we're not going to reinvent everything. But uh, it's mostly tightened more uh, and focused like, more on Tekton CA. And, uh, and we have as well our, our CI image. So a lot of the base image was before like, on, on uh, Kinetic. Like I was like based on Kinetic on everything. Now it's like we have our own CAs, which like, only does for Tekton and not for all the Kinetic uh, projects. So the, the, uh, the release of the, the Tekton on Tekton, so we started like, to develop a few uh, tasks. Those tasks, we made, it, uh, we made it available on the Tekton CD catalog. So those tasks are the one that's going to build uh, and test and linter the code or even the coverage. Uh, it's going to use, uh, it's going to publish image with KO. So KO, uh, probably not, you're probably not uh, aware what it does. It's a tool coming from, uh, Google, from Google, which is really nice when you develop, uh, when you are a developer and even for production is that uh, it's going to uh, take a, a full set of config, which is like a config for, uh, for, uh, for deploying your, your service, and uh, which is uh, Kubernetes uh, configs. And it's going to build your code like uh, in a very efficient way. And after it's going to uh, deploy it, and it's going to change like the image references inside, uh, inside your, uh, your templates. So you can, uh, so you can reuse those uh, so you can reuse those uh, images directly. And uh, we, re we, uh, we generate a release.yml. So what's release.yml? Release.yml is the, is the big template file, YAML file, that you, usually the end user is going to use and uh, going to uh, Kubernetes create, Kubernetes uh, create to, uh, to start it. And uh, we publish release on, uh, on uh, Google Container Storage uh, bucket. And uh, that's what the task uh, is doing. And all the tasks are, are available for, for others. And uh, we, have, we, we, are, we are aiming to executable everywhere, like to be able like, to do that kind of thing anywhere. But the problem is that currently we are very, very tight uh, to uh, the, Google, uh, the Google infrastructure. 
And uh, so, so a lot, a lot of the things are like uh, are running, the, are running there. So part of our work is like trying to untitle us, especially from a much, uh, from the midstream perspective, because we don't run uh, GCS. Uh, so we try like to get uh, stuff that's more agnostic to uh, to the GCS infrastructure. So uh, I'm going to list, like that's a list of uh, what's available on Pro and what's the comparison to Tekton. So you get like uh, the hooking, which is a uh, Trigger handles that, and we call it like interceptor, which is like the logic thing that's going to handle like web uh, web request. You get the job execution lifecycle, so that's pipeline for us. Uh, we get the deck, which is our dashboard. I'm not sure why it's not in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so we get we don't get a merging bot. That's uh, for sure. We don't have like a periodic uh, job, but you can emulate that with uh, Kubernetes uh, cron jobs. And we don't have a garbage collection, which is really annoying. And uh, I just end up doing OCD later all, but, uh, but it's not really efficient. <laughs> or cube uh, uh, control. Uh. But uh, anyways, like so, we started like uh, so to get our way of of, uh, of pro. We started like to uh, to to work on the integration and how to get the in integration. So so, so the, the the pro uh, pro how pro and Tekton works is like you get a definition from pro. And uh, you say that the agent is going to be a Tekton pipeline. So we have like a small agent that's going to watch for the prone jobs and is going to run and going to uh, generate like the pipeline CRDs, uh, the pipeline runs, which is going to uh, start the pipeline, start the task, start the Tekton controller. So that's how uh, the integration that we have currently with, uh, with Pro, uh, it's, uh, it's working. So you, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward. You have something that, uh, and it's pretty straightforward in a Kubernetes world because everything is watchable with uh, the operator lifestyle uh, kind of thing, then uh, so you just watch for the projects and uh, you just adapt it to whatever uh, you want to do. So we uh, we have some issues with that. We have the logs that are not uh, integrated, so that was really hard because the way it does, it's not we we doing something else and they're doing something else, so it's not very integrated. Uh, we have uh, like the integration is tied to a very old version of Tekton. Which is depends on the zero three one, and uh, when the our current release is, current release is uh, zero ten, we just came out uh, yesterday as well, and uh, that's incompatible. Uh, and and there is a there is a there is a complexity with Pra, which is uh, which comes out of uh, every time you're doing like a really large uh, project uh, like Kubernetes, you need a lot of use cases, but uh, there is a lot of complexity in there that's very hard uh, to. Uh, to figure out uh, for, for a lot of people. It's very, it's very uh, it, it kind of uh, difficult to figure. So we started like, to uh, get our own uh, dog fooding cluster, which is a new uh, Kubernetes cluster where we started to experiment and we started to introduce uh, services in there and to be able like, to test those services without disrupting the others, uh, the, uh, the main infra. So, we, uh, so the, our first thing that was really important, especially when you do CI, is to be able to do logging. So we have our own logs. Uh, we, for, uh, for, for everyone, that, that, that logging component is unfortunately very tied to uh, the Google container storage infra, which is using uh, some kind of logging system, which, uh, which I can't remember the name. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it works for us because we run on GCS, but uh, it will not work for everyone. But we are, uh, we are acknowledging that, that issue that we need something like that a component, and we've been working on it. And uh, and uh, we we so like currently we have uh, like all those uh, those jobs those jobs that gets uh, that gets all the containers because those containers are ephemeral so we need to collect them and we are uploading them on uh, GCS. Uh, we have uh, so we have like for like to, to be able like to uh, to start to start with uh, with moving away from Pra we started to do our releases the releases are started to be on uh, on uh, on Tekton. So we have like uh, we have different task, task for uh, different release, release type, and we have a cron job that's going to trigger us for uh, for nightly. Uh, everything is a code like GitOps and uh, on everything, and we have uh, so everything is like every time you're doing uh, you're doing you're doing uh, like a push is going to deploy uh, to deploy that that thing, and uh, and we work by pull requests obviously and everything. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, so, so the, the the way to do to do to get into CD so we can do our continuous deployment inside uh, inside Tekton 
uh, we we started like to uh, to have uh, one uh, like continuously build images. So we have like a tool called Mario, which takes care of building like all the images uh, all the images together. Uh, we we started like to uh, deploy like all the Tekton uh, resources with pre and post uh, deploy testing, and uh, so all those. All those steps were like incremental to get uh, to get to uh, to, uh, to our own Tekton services. So let me uh, let me try to go quickly like over the uh, over the, the missing uh, the missing pipe. So there's a lot of stuff missing. In, it's very new. It's like as it was like we are only 0 10, 0 10. and uh, we have uh, service configurations uh, that's uh, that's missing. We have uh, we we need to have like chatbot integration. So we don't have like those chatbot from Slack or whatever. That to be able like to interact with uh, with uh, with Tekton, which is something that the Pro has. Uh, we don't have like any mergers, like uh, any final mergers, and uh, we have a dashboard. But uh, we have a Tekton dashboard, which is. But the problem is that uh, it, the access control is uh, is uh, is open for everyone for action. But I think there was a PR just two days ago, like to be able like to have read only for make it for public access. We need to have like the test portable because the problem is like it's very tied to GCS. So it's trying, for example, like to build some images and upload it on the GCS. And currently we are very tied to it. So we need to be vendor neutral. And uh, we don't have any monitoring or tracking uh, resources version and config. So there is other little bolts that's missing, which is uh, we, don't, we, don't, we, we don't have a way on task to say finally. So whenever there is a failure, or success, you're doing something out of it. We don't handle failure as well currently, but it's been like worked on uh, really, really heavily currently how we want to do that properly. We don't have like params output, so you have like a param, you can specify a, param, a parameter as input, but you can't say that uh, you're going to have an output. So whatever like you build like a new image and you're going to have like a, or you're going to deploy a new cluster and you're going to generate like a cluster of resources and uh, you can't specify like a parameter out of it. So we don't have like a optional inputs. Uh, the inputs are like a compulsory, uh, but you can put like some default though. And uh, you, uh, we don't have any notification, but uh, like we are working on this end phase with cloud events. We are done our way to have like remote tasks, which was what I was talking about before. But uh, there is like a huge PR and a colleague of mine uh, has been working on uh, heavily on this. And uh, we don't have hooks, switch and loops, which is Something that we want and or we don't want, and uh, w so we've been uh, working on it. I'm encouraged, like whoever is interested, like can uh, join us on the discussion. So I have a demo, but uh, it's a video that should take five minutes, and it will be right on time for the end of that uh, of that thing. Problem is, I can need to f I need to find it. So that's uh, that's a small demo. Which uh, I'm so normally it's like I would uh, demo like the Mario bot that would build uh, the bots. But in that case, I'm going to uh, present like a use case for uh, Tekton. So that was very easy to do. So what, uh, what my aim was to do is to be able like to uh, edit uh, like, a, like you have like a, like a web developer that's going to uh, needs to develop, uh, deploy his, uh, his or her application and, uh, and uh, needs to work on it. So every time you're doing a PR, we want to have a preview environment runs and test that PR and show that PR what it does. So the main point is that like, that's available. If, I mean, a lot of uh, CI CD system has that. But the main point of that presentation of that thing is that, uh, is that it's very easy uh, to integrate the deployment because it's Kubernetes uh, native and because you, you're reusing Kubernetes, that uh, whatever like you're doing your CI, you, uh, you are doing your deployment at the same time. And it's very close to each other, so it's very easy to implement instead of having like, external resources or external plugins or everything. So what it does, like, it's going to uh, go over and it's going to do a PR, and uh, it's uh, hopefully going to submit it. It's not hopefully because I have uh, it's recorded, so <laughs> yeah, hopefully uh, I watch it properly. So it's going to uh, to do that kind of thing, and after it's going to do, it's going to use the webhook system I was talking about, uh, triggers, uh, to get notified and create like a new PR, a new uh, test, and uh, and start to test it and deploy it and uh, build it and deploy it. So, uh, so let's see. So now it's like you just send the PRs, and uh, I have a message of Vincent, which is my co-speaker that was supposed to be here, but um, he's only here in a Slack message. Uh, so like, here is like I'm watching like what's going on. So he just created like a new, a new pipeline, uh, pipeline uh, preview URL, 
and he's going to he's going to comment it. So here's like he just send a comment and he just say like uh, it's a pending checks and uh, it goes well. So so just uh, just after let me a little bit. Uh, so now it's like when uh, when when he builds it like he started like to uh, get you like a link to the UI which is like the OpenShift UI but uh, OpenShift OpenShift uh, the text on the dashboard works well as well. And uh, and now it's like it's uh, it's going. So you see like all the pipeline run and everything, and everything that, that gets built. Here is like you get the CI, which is the new CI with the emoji, and uh, like you can watch with the CLI all the steps that goes on, and uh, and all the all the the building. So it's building the image itself. It does the imaging and it does uh, the full uh, building of the thing, and and it's going to uh, going to get it uh, pushed. And uh, so that's push, and now it's like uh, like you have like the live environment that uh, that's a new URL is going to be to be to be generated. That new URL would contain the change that's tied to your uh, PR, and uh, which would uh, would be done. So so that's the that's the demo, and uh, and uh, yeah, my main thing which uh, which I'm trying to uh, to show is that uh, it's very easy to to build those things. Inside Kubernetes and uh, and uh, with Kubernetes uh, like deployment and uh, yep I think that's uh, mostly it from uh, from my side. Uh, so I don't know how many seconds I have for uh, Q&A. Yeah. So if you have a, so that's that's the recap. You can read it or you can ask me questions as well uh, quickly. And I think I'm going to take a few questions. If I, we don't have time, I mean I'm here going to be on the booth and uh, you can uh, you can do. If you have any question, yep, yep. Uh, I saw that in, in the latest release, there is only one uh, record from Kubernetes. Are you going to, and it is like Cloud event? Cache, cache or something like that, it's custom resource definition. Uh, we, don't have a, we don't have any custom resources from uh, Kubernetes. We have Cloud events, which is like a standard of things, which is like for notifications of, uh, of uh, I, I one. One, one. Which one is it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I build uh, that thing yeah, every day. I, Uh, maybe maybe you're talking about the APIs, so the API definitions, like API versions, like a kind of thing. Yeah, those case, uh, those maybe you're talking about the, um, you know, like uh, the namespace. So you can have like native dev slash v1 alpha one, but uh, I don't believe we're using uh, we're using directly the the uh, we're using directly the the CRDs from native and uh, going away. We are going away from that. But maybe I miss it, and uh, in that case, uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. But uh, anyway, like our goal is definitely to move away from uh, Knative, so we're not tied to Knative, so that's the main goal. Yes? Um, what is the biggest advantage or added value of, of, uh, of Tekton over Brawl? What, what, what is the, the reason to, to, to use Tekton? Uh, that's a good question, yeah. Uh, so uh, we... Can you repeat the question? What? Huh? Yeah. Can you please repeat the question? Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, 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 yeah sorry. So the question is like, what's the advantage compared between Pro and uh, and Tekton? Why would you use Tekton against Pro? So I'm, I was just mentioning just before uh, the the differences is that uh, is that there is Pro in itself has been been designed like very in a Kubernetes like uh, for Kubernetes upstream or for OpenShift and uh, to be able like to uh, to do uh, to do Kubernetes. So it's a, it's it gets very heavy. And uh, it's not very uh, it's not very user friendly, I would say, and uh, and it does a lot of things. Like we are we are aiming like to do building blocks for others to uh, to plug into it, and uh, with a nice way. When you see our, our YAMLs, like are very easy with with a bunch of steps that are very clever. When the other ones like it handles like a lot of different things, a lot of configuration, and uh, it's really like a big uh, a big uh, a big uh, a big thing, but uh, uh, like a really big uh, piece to run. And uh, it's really hard when you run it to get away from it as well. <laughs> yeah. If I understood your presentation correctly, Tekton is a platform for building CI on top of Kubernetes. That, that's correct. It's to execute CIs on top of, uh, it's to, to do CIs on top of, uh, of Kubernetes, like in a native, native uh, Kubernetes way. Yes, but that CI can actually work with anything, not just Kubernetes itself. The, so, so Tekton itself, Tecton is like so the question is like if CI's can work uh, with anything. Tecton itself 
run inside Kubernetes. So you can't get away. But you can deploy anywhere, anywhere. So you can have like a target that says something else. And uh, that's not, you don't have to deploy inside Kubernetes. That was my point before. Yep? Is, uh, the question was, is Tecton, uh, was, I don't know. Is Tecton was, uh, managing uh, the artifacts? So Tecton doesn't have uh, artifacts manager or like uh, things that uh, you do. You can plug your artifact manager from uh, whatever project if you want. We do upload our artifacts to GCS directly. So to a Google container storage, so you'd have, uh, so we don't provide our own currently. So the way to do that, the way to do that, so inside task, if you want to transform uh, informations between the, those tasks, the way you're going to do that, you're usually going to use like a PVC. So we just have like on 010, we have a new concept called workspace which is a workspace of all your file that you're going to pass through. Those workspace are going to be tied to a PVC, but PVC is not available everywhere. So you can have a small passing information which is like a config map, and that config map uh, will, be, will act as your storage. But obviously, if you can have a PVC, and you can have a Google Cloud storage as well as a resource for the workspace. So the concept was perfect to address that. I think I'm out of time, but I'm available. I'm here, and uh, I'm friendly, I think. <laughs> I'm not out of time as well. Woo.